What up, everybody? Welcome back to Someone's PC. Um, for this week, I wanted to throw in a deck that had tons of hype before, kind of died down a bit, but seemed to be um, like on a top three playlist on a lot of players, uh, how would I say, agenda for the uh, week one and week two of Cities. Um, and it's a Sceptile deck. Uh, this time, we have it piloted by our guest, Michael Canabes. Um, and he got second place at Orlando or whatever city it actually was, but it was basically Orlando cities, um, losing to I believe Tyrantrum in the finals. So, how you doing, Mike? How you been? Pretty good. Two right. second place wins. Uh, I didn't even expect to show up to the Orlando cities. I figured out I was going about thirty minutes before I showed up. Oh, peace, peace. Uh, so, I can't really complain. Two second place wins in the first weekend of cities for me. Gotcha. Did you, did you go in knowing you were going to play this if you went to the actual tournament, or are you just sitting there on the fly and you're like, all right, let me go and play this? I knew that I was going to play on Sunday, uh, mm -hmm. so I texted my friend Ryan Seelhoff, uh Let him on Friday night. I was like, hey, I'm going to go to a cities. Uh, I'm thinking Night March and Raichu Bats. What should I play? Uh, he says those were the two decks he was thinking of as well, in addition to Skeptile. Uh, he sent me the list. I made a couple changes to it, and I was like, I really like this. So I decided to play it on Saturday. Okay, nice. Um, I I thought the same thing, but when when I ever, whenever I went to go think of playing Sceptile, I was like, all right, the theory is sound, and it sounds great. Like when you get off like a Jagged Saber, then you hit a scoop up when it's really needed, and then you bring up another one, you just go back and forth and keep on your opponent with just a consistent 100 to 110 damage if you have already dose up. Um, but when I actually played with it, I felt it wasn't as consistent as I wanted to be. Um, your list is pretty much like six, seven cards different. So we're going to dive into it and see what really mattered between it. Um, so starting with the list, standard, we have two Shaman, um, just consistency, draw, blah, blah, blah. Um, much like the uh, UK list, you did a 4-3 Sceptile line. And with the promo Sceptile, did that actually matter at all? Did it Was it necessary? Does it make you feel like... Even needed it. Uh, it made a difference in several matches. Um, at one point, there was a, I was playing against an Evital Zorark round three. Okay. Uh, and I had a, I mean, I had a solid opening, and Evital is already a strong matchup. But yeah. I had had to burn a lot of resources early because I just kept opening with Sycamore. My judge was prized. Yeah. And uh, because of that, I was kind of on the ropes. I was ahead on the prize change exchanged, and if I didn't have the promo uh, Skeptile. I wouldn't have been able to take a prize on a Shaman because my Ariados was gone as well. I mean, pretty much I had to dump a ton of resources. So gotcha. they let me take the last two prizes on a Shaman EX using the second attack. What's funny enough. It's okay. 130. Yeah, and then you can just turn it right into um, mm -hmm. a Septa, bring it back in. Set it, and then when you scoop up, you can go back into it. Now you have the agility play again um, when you brought it back. The second, second attack, Strong Slash, ever matter? No? Uh, that was what I was saying. I, I, oh, okay, 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 okay. Kill the shaman with the strong slash attack because that was the only way. Once you have air, if you don't have Ariados on your board, yeah, you cap at a hundred damage. Okay, uh, so I mean, strong slash is a backup attack to knock out a shaman. Uh, that won me a game against Ebatol, and then against Night March, I played Michael Shaw, and um, I did kill a Joltik again with agility. I did hit tails, but it did give me a way to kill a Joltik with one energy. Beast. All right, I like it. Um, I, I definitely played one in my build as well. I just never got to use it as attack, so. I never knew if it actually mattered. Uh, three Mega Sceptiles, standard. Um, a 1 1 Ariados line is different than the UK list, which played a 2 2. So, did you feel like you got out Ariados enough? And if so, did it even matter when you needed it? I definitely had a problem getting it out, not gonna lie. Yeah. It wasn't the most consistent uh, keeping Ariados, and I did not get it out every single match. There were several matches that, even though I discarded it early, I would try to get it back with Super Rod and have difficulties doing it later. Okay. Um, but I found that the damage addition did not matter in every single matchup. Um, it was mainly important when I played against like a, a Magnezone Raikou deck. Um, it was really good against Night March and set up a win against Night March. Um, and in a couple random other situations against Tarantrum, you know, for example, my loss, it was pretty much useless in that matchup. Yeah. Uh, but so a lot of a lot of matchups, it really just doesn't matter. So that's why I, I end up feeling that. One one really was the right way to go. Okay, and then you also have the super rod too, which wasn't in the UK list, and so that can complement it if you discard Ariados early with like a Sycamore, and then you draw to your spin rack later on, super rod it back, etc., etc. Okay, 
Um, the next big thing on the list is uh, the version is pretty standard, so we're not gonna go over that. Uh, the next the next big thing was a two Jirachi. Why two? Why not one? And did it actually matter? Like, are are you gonna cut a Jirachi in the um, future if you went to play this? I don't know if I cut one in the future, uh, just because I didn't get a lot of experience with it. Okay. No, it did not matter. I will say that in the sense of I never used two of them. I didn't have one killed to have a second one. Uh, the reason behind it was because I felt, just looking at the deck, I felt immediately that Night March would be the hardest matchup because gotcha. they, they can get to kill a Mega Skeptile in one hit. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt that two Jirachi would really help that matchup. I figured that if anybody in my area specifically, if anybody played Night March, they were either A, going to not play Bronzong or Melodic, or B, play Melodic. Um, and against the melodic version, especially, I feel that two Jirachi can really make uh, like a huge difference. yeah, a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. Because when when they're playing one and then uh, they go ahead and like knock it out through an escape rope and then Lysander or they uh, melodic and bring back like discarded DCEs and loop into more Lysanders on you. You need to be able to right sit with like two on that. Okay. Having that second one there would have just you know I felt that it was really going to make a massive difference. Um, encountering the Night March matchup and just putting them on the ropes. Um, and even against random other decks, it yeah. was useful to kind of stall for a turn if I wasn't ready to go in with a Mega Skeptile quite yet. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I, I mean, I've been promoting that card since forever. I really like it. Um, yeah. And it'll also help with your uh, with your Tyrantrum matchup um, if you're able to get it down early and if your opponents misplay where they attach to the active and then they're not going to resolve an attack the following turn. Or, like, on that turn. And you're like, oh, okay. You get to capitalize on situations. Um, Hoop is super standard. Don't want to go over that. Um, energy retrieval at one. Why not two? And did you ever feel like you needed it? I actually, I, I never really had an energy problem. There were definitely games that I, I got really close to running out of resources. Yeah. You know, that I would be counting and trying to figure out, did I have enough to finish the match? But I never actually ran out of resources. Okay. So... Some people, and one thing, the first thought when I looked at the deck was like, why wouldn't you play Fisherman in this deck? It's a double energy retrieval and reusable. Yeah. Uh, and it's essentially max potion when you right. get a, when you jack it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Um, would maybe I cut one of the super scoop ups for an energy retrieval? Maybe. Uh, just because they, they kind of do the same thing. Yeah. But super scoop up adds consistency while adding the same effect. I never had a problem, so I would probably end up leaving it just at one energy retrieval. But it was extremely useful at several different occasions. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I feel like the games that like you're trying to grind out like back and forth exchanges are the only ones that you need uh, to like play multiple energy retrieval in. And the way the meta is starting to sculpt, we're starting to push away from that. Like there, There's so many big hitter, um, like one prize attackers, Glade, yep. uh, like Baby Yev, just for poking purposes of turn by turn kind of exchange so i feel like it's only like in a metric matchup where you constantly need energy pay to retreat energy retrieval back yeah and yeah that was going to be my only comment is that i didn't actually face any monetric uh so i never got into it but i do feel that that would probably be one of the matchups where you really do go back and forth in mm -hmm. um and a fisherman if you expect a lot of monetric in your area either a second energy retrieval or a fisherman would probably make a big difference in that matchup and make sure that it's in your favor. Okay. Beast. Um, escape rope, yeah. Um, just a switch card consistency. Uh, super odd, we explained. I mean, if, if you're playing like energy retrieval, it's kind of the same thing as playing a, a super odd. Just, you're trying to reuse resources. With the 1 1 Ariados line, you kind of need it back. Um, you might even use the Verizian twice if your opponent gets two Regi, um, Regi Ice online against you and yep. just start yep. locking yep. in that way. That okay. was a big reason for it as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, four scoop up. I mean, you can you can cut down to three, like you said, but uh, four is just consistency. It's a really good card. I mean, you hit you hit heads. You basically erase one to two turns of your opponent since you have two twenty HP. Um, trainer's mail, consistency, ultra ball, blah, blah 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 blah. Two hex, not one, two. What I will say mm -hmm. is that up until I got into top eight. I was super angry at playing any Hex at all. Okay. I literally, the entire Swiss rounds, every time I played Hex, it was kind of just like, well, I have this in my hand. I might want to try to shame it next turn, so let me play it now to get it out of my hand. Once gotcha. I got into the top eight, though, it made all the difference in the world because the first matchup I played against in, in Cut was Magnus on Raikou, um, and the two Hex really made a brutal difference. I think I hexed them four turns in a row, um, and the same thing came in Tarantula. Game one in my finals, I hexed five turns in a row. 
Um, and that was, again, only because I played two copies of it, and it really made it uh, an easier access kind of thing. Gotcha. So, so you you do like it? Don't like it? Because we we in in cut it clearly showed its worth, and then in Swiss you're just like, why am I even playing this card? Why can't you be something else? Kind of thing. It's a matchup kind of thing. Uh, the problem with Tarantrum is that they have a lot of attackers. Tarantrum really does. Yeah, especially with Zoroark now too. They just, they're flooded. Yeah. And and with uh, Skyfield opening up their bench, and then you cut their bench off with you know if you play down your own forest. Uh, so something I found interesting as I was playing the Tarantula matchup is that you had to be careful with Link when you played your Forest of Giant Plants because you wanted to be able to uh, Lysander some of the things on their bench as their prizes. Okay. So having the two Hex was really good, and I think actually if you don't play two Hex, you have to be really careful in the Tarantula matchup. I think that that one's more of a meta call. Um, if you expect things like Tarantrum, Magnazone, um, even Night March, it should be good against sometimes, you know. Yeah, yeah, if, if, if you're able to open, like, that uh, Energy, Skeptile EX, then Hex Maniac them before they get their Shaman set up, then you're, you're chilling. Like, it's a pretty good progression of a turn. You good? <laughs> good. <laughs> nice. There's definitely plenty of matchups that the two Hex is good in, uh, but if you expect a more, you know, a meta filled with Evil Tall, uh, Manectric, Maybe just some night mars and things like that. Yeah, definitely one hex is plenty. Um, I kind of went with it because it was just kind of in the list, and I and you know by the end of the day, I definitely was was happy to have both of them. Okay. Um, one judge over any kind of birches. Yeah. So judge op or judge is just a really good card, and I feel like it might put you in situations when if if you know a jagged saber is going to be a ko and they're active and they're running low on energy or they don't have their engine up, you. Judge, Jagged Saber, run away with the game kind of thing. Is that what you're going for with it? The way that I look at Judge especially, um, the original list when it was sent to me, it had a Birch in it. I immediately swapped it for a Judge because first of all, if you flip Tails, might as well play a Judge. Yeah. Um, there was a turning point in a sit-in on Bleak Challenge, I don't know, at the beginning of the season. I was playing uh, Rayquaza and playing against a Night March deck, and I realized he was playing teammates two turns in a row and just literally setting himself up for the win. I didn't play Ace Trainer, Judge wasn't legal yet, and I realized at that moment I was like, I will not play Cities at any point without some way to disrupt my opponent's hand. Yeah. Because it's if you know your opponent doesn't play something like Judge or Ace Trainer or something like that, it just makes it too easy to set up a, a full win condition. So mm -hmm. I, I, I made it a point that anything I play will have at least one Judge or an Ace Trainer at the very least. Um, so I did replace the Birds quickly with a Judge, and it was and it worked out for me. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely starting to feel that way now. Uh, yeah. After playing with Judge and Birches a little bit, because if if you have no hand disruption, your opponent can just sit there on like two yeah. th two or three VS seekers and run away with games if they get the proper and, energy attachments. So yeah, and any kind of setup deck. I mean, day day first day of cities, I played against you know Magazine Raikou on a couple other things that if you get an early Judge out, it really hinders their setup. You know, day two, I know, you know, when I talked about it, I played like a Greninja Milsank deck, and that would have actually, the, the only reason I beat that was probably because I played a turn one Judge. Okay. So, Judge, to me, is, is really a card that should be in every single deck, if not at least Ace Trainer um, in standard. Yeah. And then whenever I'm playing Ace Trainer, I feel like it should be only in decks with Compressor in it. Um, yeah. Just because it's, you can use that as an immediate answer and set up a fear for your opponent even taking a prize. As opposed to judge, like you're like, oh, they're gonna judge me anyway. I might as well just tag and take whatever I can. Um, two last under. Uh, that was like the other deck. I think you just need in these type of decks where you're gonna stream and you can't have your opponents run away after tagging them once when every attack needs to be a two hit KO. Um, outside of Shaman Yanks. With Zorork in the format, mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the nice things is that you did a perfect damage to kill Zorork. So if anybody put one on their bench, a Lysander would come down almost immediately to uh, to take that threat out. It does a lot of damage and it helps their setup, so I want to get rid of it fast. Gotcha. Um, four sick more standard. Your force giants plants at three, really good. You have three trainers mills anyway, so I feel like you can hit it. Um, turn one to turn two, extremely fast. Uh, assault vest. You only played one. Why the one? Obviously, it's for obviously it's for night march. That's why you also play the two Jirachi. Yeah. But um, w do you feel like one's enough? It was useless, or you can go up to two or three, but in doing so, you need to add more forest so you can get that turn one assault vest plus a forest like assault vest hands down won me many games that's good I was extremely happy that i put that one in uh, the original list when it was sent over me had a hard charm in it and i was and i realized i was like no i'd rather just play assault. that seems better yeah um and it, it really helped me out um, okay 
One thing I will say is about, like, for example, Forest. I kind of I, – Forest was one of the first cards that I would like to go back to four. I cut uh, the fourth Forest that was in the deck for one the second Jirachi. Four Forest would have been nice to always be able to get that turn one Skeptile. Mm -hmm. uh, evolve without using the tool and always have one with the Salt Vest. And I would like to play more Salt Vest, but no matter what, if you don't play – if you play more than one, you need Tool Retriever or something in the deck to be able to use it. Yeah. That's something I would like. Because it would just it would just be a completely different strategy though. Maybe not playing as many forests and then playing tool retriever plus uh, assault vest would be something that would work really well for the deck. Because I mean, it started with playing against a Mega Mewtwo deck round two, round two or four. Uh, Cynthia Cat, she was playing that, and it made it so that if she put a DC on the thing, it was doing only an extra twenty damage. It was Mega Mewtwo Y, excuse me. Um, yeah. So her Salt Fest really limited her capability to try to one-shot a Skeptile. Then I played against a Night, Night March, Michael Shaw, putting okay. Mega, uh, the Salt Fest on my Mega Skeptile. It means it had 260 health, theoretically. So he needed, not only did he need all 11 Night Marchers in the discard, but he also needed a Muscle Band and a Giovanni. Yeah, to be which is to next to impossible for that deck, at, le at least to resolve on, like, mm -hmm. still having four to five prizes left, so... This was at the end of the game, mm -hmm. and, it, and it was the only reason he, it, that he lost, because he had actually, uh, his last two prizes, he still had a Lampet prize, so he could not be able to uh, to kill the one with the Assault Vest on it. Gotcha. Um, and then in top eight, against the Magazine Raikou deck, he actually played a really low uh, energy count, surprisingly. It was only eight basic lightning and two flash energy. Okay, sounds like um, my deck. Yeah, nice. Right, so but actually that's... by putting the Assault Vest on a Mega Skeptile, because he only played eight basic it made it so he was impossible to ever one shot uh the skeptile without using pikachu yeah um so it, it made a it made a big difference in, in, in almost every matchup it almost made a big difference in tarantula because i forgot about tarantula's ability and i put it on a normal skeptile i was like oh it's gonna live then and I he's like no <laughs> and i was like oops uh, oh. the, the, the dino breaks through okay oh, well. yeah so if you had to add in more vests you would want a tool retriever, you said. Yeah. Just, just um. Yeah. More vest without putting tool retriever or something like that. I feel like it's just counterproductive. You won't use them. Okay. The max amount of time I would only mega evolve once a game without using spirit link, and that would only be if it's turn one. I think once the entire uh, tournament that I mega evolve without using a spirit link past turn one, and that's just because I think it was actually in the finals. It was because I was just drawing really poorly. Yeah, I heard you drew a pass and got bodied. Like, you just it sat was, there and you were like, oh, okay, this is fun. I was trying to make my entire finals. Game game one, I, I drew like I should be, and I you know, I ran, I pretty much ran him over. Mm -hmm. Game two and three, it was poor drawing, making a comeback, um, and zero for eight on Super Scoop Up. Yeah. And then to speak to that, even though you dead drew, um, it's not really about, oh, the, like, the deck isn't built consistently or that kind of thing. Sometimes... Your 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 deck's gonna do that. We play a game of variance, and so you're gonna run into like all the like, these kind of things that's gonna happen to you in top cut, and you just kind of gotta sit there and accept it. So, um, any anything you play, no matter what deck you play, and I don't care how consistent it is, you might have a dead draw. I mean, yeah, if you play for sure. Seven round cities, and you make it all the way to finals, and you play three games each set. That right there is uh, nine and seven. That's that's sixteen games that you have to play. Yeah. And to say out of sixteen games, you're not gonna have one, maybe two bad hands. I mean, that's that's, that's unrealistic. No matter what you're playing. Unless you're running really hot, and that's when you're like, all right, is, you're gonna win the whole tournament off of that. Yeah. And that's fine. If you're if you're running really well, that's that's great. But if you're just you know standard percentages should say that you you at least get one bad hand throughout the entire tournament. It's, it's gonna happen. Gotcha. So running more vests means that you would run more force to complement it. Yes. Or tool retriever, one or the other. Okay, both is super unnecessary. You're doing too much. I think I would go if I'm running more vests. I think I'd go for tool retriever over forest. Okay. Uh, just because having more forest just guarantees you'll get it turned one. It doesn't give you the ability to attach more than one vest. Okay. So I think if I wanted to try a vest version, I'd go maybe only like two forest and one to two tool retriever. And then even at that point, if I'm playing tool retriever, I'd probably even try something like a muscle band. Gotcha. Uh, just because there's random situations where having that would make a difference. Yeah. Hitting the 120s plus the RE dose for like a 130 on a baby Ev would be really sweet. And honestly, the basic Skeptile too. Having a 
uh, on muscle band on either one of the basic skeptiles. Uh, I think it does 130 as base damage. Then poison makes it 140. Mm -hmm. Muscle band 160. If they don't retreat at 170 HPX, it dies coming into your turn. Yeah. So I mean, it could make a big difference again there. Okay, I like it. Um, final thing would probably be Mega Turbo and Professor's Letter. Both not in here. Do you? Oh, we lost you. Uh-oh. You back? Are you with me? Back? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can't see you. Hold on, trying to fix that. Uh, oh. There we go. I think you can hit the little video camera at the bottom. Gotcha. Oh. You can see me, but I can't. Okay. All right, there we're good. We're good. All right. Um, you said Mega Turbo and Professor's Letter. I'm sorry, continue your thought. Um, w why aren't they included, and do you feel like they're needed at all? You have 10 energy, so I assume you're going to get a lot. Um, energy all the time drawing, but at, at some, some certain points of like this letter, this one energy could have been a double letter, and you can like letter after you already supported into two letters, then you, uh, or two energy, you attach a grass, and then next turn you're going to attach another grass, then sycamore your hand away, instead of just the one grass being there. Like, it's a letter. So, do, do you feel like you can cut down to nine and then play a letter, or do you feel like ten's perfect? And, there's, there's no reason. Yeah. No reason? I don't, because the thing is, is that you don't have to attach two energy with Mega Skeptile's attack. I will say, I made a big mistake. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the entire tournament that you could split your energy up with Mega Skeptile. Are you serious? You didn't know that? Grafton, uh, Grafton Roll told me in the car on the way home to me dropping him off. Uh -huh. I literally had to pull up the card because I didn't believe it. Oops. Um, anyways, so point being is that most of the time, I only, I literally, even if I was holding two energy in hand, I would only attach one. Uh, when I attacked, um, because I wanted to save the next one in case I needed a Jagged Saber next turn or something like that. Okay. Because realistically, everything only attacked for two energy anyways. So there really wasn't a, a benefit to using both. No. So I, I don't think Letter in any way would have really helped me. Okay. There was never a time where it was like, man, I really want to be able to attach both energy, or I need two energy in my hand right now. Gotcha. Uh, Turbo, on the other hand, was one of the first cards that I sat there was like, I would really love playing one, maybe even two Mega Turbos. That's what I was thinking. I, I like a, like a one or two of. I didn't think it would need a heavy, heavy dedication, like a three to four, like you're playing a Mega Mewtwo Y deck. No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that first of all, by playing one or two Mega Turbo, you open the entire. You just open the deck up. You now have the possibility of being able to attack turn one, which if you can actually pull off a Jagged Saber turn one, not that it'd be consistent to do that. That's yeah. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that. There were random situations, like for example, against Night March. Mm -hmm. um, that actually matchup specifically that game that I played, it would have gone a lot smoother for me. But there was a crucial turn in the game where he uh, knocked out a Skeptile before it mega evolved, and I attached. I was able to have two energy on a Skeptile, and I was going to go for a Jagged Saber, but I had a Spirit Link, and I wasn't able to find the actual Mega itself. Okay. So basically, he knocked out my normal Skeptile, it died, and now I had no energies on the board. So having one Mega Turbo in that situation, to be able to power up a Mega in one turn, and again, start setting up all over. Yeah, it would have put you right back in the game. Yeah, that's right. beast. So instead, I put myself in a situation where I had to rely on Jirachi stalling him for a turn. And if he had had the Lysander DC at the same time in that turn, I probably would have been in a really bad situation. Uh, but thankfully, he, he did end up, you know, after I used Stardust, he, he did have to pass that turn. So, okay. Um, yeah. Beast. Uh, anything else? Because that's pretty much it for me. My last question is with Mega Turbo and Letter. Is there anything significant you want to tell us from in between those five rounds? How you feel about the deck in general? Um, I know you switched decks going into the next day, I believe. Because this was Saturday and then Sunday. I know you switched decks. Um, what made you not want to play this one again? And would you ever after making all the changes that we discussed? Um, the reason I switched from uh, Skeptile to Night March from day one to day two is, again, I felt Night March was uh, almost as good of a call as Skeptile, but yeah. I literally, as we were in the store, we were in one of the most, um, one of the major stores in Orlando that sells cards, and there were actually people sitting there on the computers looking up Camera FDX and G Magma. Oh, cameras. no, you got to make those meta calls. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, well, people might be playing Fire tomorrow. I'm not playing Skeptile again, just in case. Yeah, I agree with that. I was, I was actually worried about that. Um, I would definitely play it again. I Again, I, I really didn't have knowledge of the deck before going into the tournament. Okay. But 
after learning pretty much understanding what it does and how it works, I do feel it has really, really good matchups across most of the board. Okay. If you can't pull the Skeptile in one hit, then you're you're in a good matchup. Yeah. That's and how I, I felt about it too. Right. And if I believe the most common matchup, Night March, um, you can definitely tech the deck out to have a favorable Night March matchup. Uh, at least 55, 45, or 60, 40, or something like that, because it, it can definitely be, be uh, beat Night March pretty consistently if you if you set the deck up right. Um, so I, I really enjoyed the deck. I would definitely consider it again for one of my future cities. Um, if I do play it again, I will probably either try the Mega Turbo version with one or two of those, or try the Tool Retriever and Assault Vest version. Um, just because I feel like one of those two could really make a difference in the deck, uh, as long as I'm not really cutting down on overall consistency for it. Yeah. Excuse me. Like a tra- trainer's mail, judges, via seeker, any of that stuff inside of it. Yeah. Okay. What I will say is a good thing is I feel the deck is very simple. It doesn't need a lot to keep going. Um, so I, I don't really think the deck needs a lot to stay consistent. Okay. I agree. I, I, th- I think simplicity also seems to, um, like, definitely uh, strive over most decks when it comes to playing in cities that are one game matches when you don't need overly complicated boards and you don't get a two out of three set to play it out when you when you play a simple deck that just attacks attaches goes uh, similar to Manetric, night march kind of thing then it's gonna get a lot more wins for, for standard with the really poor draw engine that were given uh for standard format I, I really think you need to go with something a little bit more simple you can't go with anything overly complex or else, again, if you play a seven-round cities with a finals, you know, three games every time, you're going to have more than one or two bad hands if you play a complex deck. Yeah, if you sure. don't So you, you have to. Um, and I talk a little bit more about that in my, you know, 60-card article about how, um, again, you need to try to stay consistent for standard. And I think that's the biggest thing you need to look out for. Yeah, I agree. All right. Um, that should be it from my end. You got anything? You good? No, nope, that's about it. I All think right. Skeptile is actually pretty good, even if I found about it, you know, the night before a city, I didn't know it was going. Yeah, Ryan texted me about it at 3 a.m. the day of, and he was yeah. like, yo, play this deck. I was like, nope, never again, not after the LC. But then you, you kept doing well, and Xander kept texting me. He texted me round after round. He was like, <laughs> Canavas is currently 5-0. and And I was like, I don't care. Screw this. And I was like, no, he's getting lucky or something. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, I got a little scared at the beginning of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, I told Xander last second after I turned my list in, I was like, I just sent him a picture of my deck list. I was like, hey, that's what I'm playing today, and I wasn't supposed to be going. He's like, oh, don't play it. Don't play it. He's like, it's bad. I, I, like, oh, I beat him with toe bats the night, the day before. The, that day before, he was he was just like, oh, my God, I lost. He played against me, and he was like, Russ, auto win, toe bats. I was like, whatever you say, baby. I'm about to body you. And he, he said the same thing to me. And I was just like, well, first of all, too late. I'm already playing it. Second of all, I really hope you're wrong. And yeah. so I was literally actually scared the whole day. I was like, man, this deck might be inconsistent. Then I just as I started playing it, I realized, like, it's too simple to be inconsistent. You guys just suck. Yeah. All right, guys. So um, I'm going to link uh, Canavez's uh, 60 Cards article. Um, it should be out tonight or tomorrow, I believe, tomorrow. Yeah, no, it, should, it should be up by tomorrow morning once Martin wakes up since he's in Czech Republic. Okay, cool. So as soon as he wakes up, uploads it, I'm going to throw it in the description. Um, please read it. It's really good. It's also one of the free articles, so... You won't have to pay to get any information from it. Um, Canavez is one of my favorite players and one of my go-to people to talk about my deck. Um, you can ask him the, the very second I mentioned Tyrantrum. He's like, oh yeah, we already looked into it a little bit. And I was like, cool, let me iron out a couple details that I went over after I went over with like Brandon Cantu, Andrew Wambal, um, Dylan, and then just the Someone's PC team in general. And so I, his mindset in the game is fantastic. Um, you're going to learn a lot just by reading these two articles on Night March. And it's Night March of Septile, right? Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. I'll so in there. So check it out. Um, if you have an account, upload it, all the good stuff, share it out. Um, Dex Beast, he's a good player. Uh, you got nothing else? For should be good? Yep. All right, man. Thanks for logging in, guys. Have a good night.